What's up everyone? Welcome to Trailer Spot, and today we will be talking about the best upcoming movies. Vin Diesel announces the timeline for the release of the first Fast X trailer. The franchise started back in 2001 with The Fast and the Furious. Since then, it has ballooned into a globe-trotting blockbuster franchise that only gets larger with each installment. 2023's Fast X will serve as the first step to concluding the franchise, with Fast and Furious 11 later set to conclude the main series. Diesel took to Instagram to share when audiences can expect the release of the first Fast X trailer. He teased the reveal while sharing a photo of him and his on-screen sister, Jorgana Brewster. Diesel wrote, less than two months away from the Fast X trailer launch. That time frame possibly means the first Fast X trailer could debut during the Super Bowl, with the NFL game taking place on February 12th. Hugh Jackman shared his plans to get into the best shape of his life for his role as Wolverine in Marvel Studios' Deadpool 3. While appearing on the Empire Film Podcast, Jackman discussed reprising his famous X-Men role for the first time since 2017's Logan. After the actor completes his run of The Music Man on Broadway, he has planned to hit the gym to prepare for his upcoming role in Deadpool 3. He said, I'm doing eight shows a week right now, so I'm only lifting weights three times a week, but I'll be getting into it once or twice a day as soon as The Music Man is done in a month. I want it to be better than ever, to be in better shape than ever, more able to do things than ever. I just get the added incentive of taking Ryan Reynolds out each day. Jackman further discussed the relationship between Wolverine and Deadpool on screen, saying that the two were opposites hate each other. He continued, I'm just talking from Logan's perspective, frustrated by him. He wants to be a million miles away from him, or wants to punch him in the head. Unfortunately, he can't be a million miles away from him in this movie so I'm probably going to punch him in the head a lot. One thing that many people seem to easily forget is that Kevin Feige always has a plan. For that reason, a new rumor about the upcoming Captain America 4 could provide a link to one of Phase 4's most ridiculed moments and the arrival of the MCU's Wolverine. Of course, all rumors are to be treated as just that, until confirmed by Marvel themselves. But coming from regular rumor insider Daniel Richtman, the latest word on Captain America New World Order could well fit with the overall MCU narrative. The new rumor centers on the main plot of Captain America 4, which will also be Anthony Mackie's movie debut as the iconic superhero. According to Richtman, the movie is primarily about an international conflict over a new metal called adamantium. For any Marvel fan, adamantium is not in fact that new as it is well known as the element that coats the claws and bones of X-Men's Wolverine. The report expands on the location of this newly discovered element within the MCU, which is supposedly found on Tiamat Island, which is the island formed by the classified celestial scene in the finale of Eternals. The emergence of the celestial in the 2021 movie has been something of a bugbear for many fans, having not been mentioned by anyone since the event happened. Recently, She-Hulk, attorney at law, contained a quick flash of a newspaper article about the strange thing that had appeared in the middle of the ocean. Now, if these rumors are true, there was always a plan for Eternals finale to help seemingly pave the way to bigger things, including the arrival of the X-Men. Working on a rumor can lead to many wild theories that never come true. However, Daniel Richtman never seems to be too far from the mark when it comes to Marvel speculation and this latest one definitely has one immediately obvious way for the potential discovery of adamantium in Captain America 4 to lead to a new Wolverine. The Captain America franchise has always had one foot in the world of genetic engineering and the creation of super soldiers. If the latest movie under the Captain America banner does see many groups attempting to gain control of the new source of adamantium, the movie's outcome could well see the metal falling into the hands of an agency that would be happy to perform some shady experiments that could end with the creation of the MCU's Wolverine in the coming years. Of course, while the MCU's version of Wolverine is still a few years away, fans of Hugh Jackman's version of the character will be getting one more outing from the Fox Universe's Wolverine in Deadpool 3. 
there are still many secrets to be revealed about Jackman's return, including whether his appearance will have any kind of long-term effects in the MCU, or whether it will be a self-contained one-shot. All in all, it means there are many things to look forward to for Marvel fans as the franchise heads into Phase 5. Avatar The Way of Water will hit the $1 billion milestone in just 12 days after its release. The long-awaited sequel to 2009's Avatar, which will stand as the highest-grossing film of all time, Avatar The Way of Water was released in theaters on December 16th. Despite an opening weekend that was below expectations, its second weekend at the box office showed that James Cameron's blockbuster had serious staying power and was primed to go to the distance. Now the sequel has hit its first major milestone. Deadline reports that Avatar The Way of Water will hit the $1 billion mark worldwide after its second Tuesday's grosses are accumulated. After its second Monday in theaters, the sequel is sitting at $955 million, meaning Avatar 2 will easily hit $1 billion with Tuesday's turnout. Amazingly, Avatar The Way of Water will achieve the major milestone in just 12 days after its theatrical release. The potential crossover between Happy Death Day and Freaky has been addressed by the producer of both films. Happy Death Day which is a cross between the time loop concept of Groundhog Day and a classic college campus slasher film, debuted in theaters in 2017 and was quickly followed by the 2019 sequel, Happy Death Day to You. Director Christopher Landon, who helmed both projects, later went on to make 2020's Freaky Friday slasher hybrid, leading fans to demand a Freaky Death Day crossover. An idea that has been given the thumbs up by several people behind the production of both films. Recently, The Hollywood Reporter sat down with Blumhouse founder Jason Blum and director-producer James Wan to discuss their latest collaboration, the upcoming killer doll flick, Megan. However, the conversation eventually turned to the Freaky Death Day crossover and whether it will really come to fruition. Blum offered a rather negative view on the future of the project saying, I wouldn't have very high hopes, though he made certain not to rule out the possibility entirely. He said, Freaky Death Day. I hate to say it, but your dreams of Freaky Death Day are a little further removed than they were even a few months ago. So I wouldn't have very high hopes, but I would also say that anything is possible. House of the Dragon writer Sarah Hess teases Season 2's Blood and Cheese episode, which promises to be a brutal and graphic revenge story. House of the Dragon premiered on HBO in August and recently wrapped up Season 1. The prequel series is set about 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, when the Targaryens are in power. However, the House Targaryen faces internal conflict when the question arises of whom will succeed King Viserys Targaryen to the Iron Throne. Just days after the show premiered, it was renewed for Season 2, which is expected to release sometime in 2024. While the season is still in early development, some details have surfaced, and one planned episode is particularly interesting. As reported by Variety, House of the Dragon Season 2 is confirmed to have a blood and cheese episode. Fans who have read George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood novel, on which the show is based, will be familiar with the term and know that it means horror. For those unfamiliar with it, blood and cheese were nicknames given to two characters in the book, who took bloody and brutal revenge on the royal family. Hess has teased that fans won't be disappointed, meaning that viewers are likely in for an extremely brutal and bloody tale in season two. The foundation for House of the Dragon's blood and cheese story was already laid in season one. At the end of the season, Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen's and Sir Laenor Valerian's second-born son, Lucerys, is killed. While the death was seemingly accidental, the sons of Rhaenyra's stepmother, Queen Alicent, were involved in the incident. Whether accidental or not, Rhaenyra is livid and will be seeking revenge. Blood and Cheese will be an old-fashioned and gruesome, an eye for an eye, a son for a son kind of story. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.